stick to science because you don't know logic or philosophy. That's just that's just my word to that. But um, this is Psalms 19. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet when their message has gone out through the earth and their words to all the world, God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete, eager to run the race. The sun rises at one end of the heavens and follows its course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. But how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free from guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Okay, now I know what the connection is. Honestly, I, I had looked at this and I was I was reading through Hebrews. And I was like, what what did I see here? And, and now I know what it is. Okay, so I have to tell you just how awesome God is for it. Because he like, things have happened this week and I came across some stuff. And, and then when I was studying for this, I was like, okay, yeah, this like totally, totally addresses that issue. And, and now I see that this, this psalm is, is exactly it. So... Um, this, the first part is just such a wonderful picture of just how much God loves us and how much, how glorious not only is God is, but just this amazing world that we have. It's just a slight reflection of, of the, the magnificence of God. So my daughter is actually, um, actually in her biology class in college. This was last year. One of the, her, I think it was one of the, the first biology classes. They were like, they were basically trying to do theology and philosophy very badly because they said, well, if, you know, if there were a creator, why would things, why would there be such variety and diversity in nature? I mean, it's just like stick to biology, stick to science because you don't know logic or philosophy. That's just, that's just my word to that. But Anyway, um, the thing is, it, this wonderful diversity is a, re is a reflection of the greatness and the magnificence of God. It's, it's you know, here, there's a, I have a review on my website called Philosophical Sci-Fi, and it's, um, the book is by J, Ed, uh, I think it's J. Edward Neal, um, it's A Door Never Dreamed Of. Really interesting, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but he, he was talking about how, so they're in this, in, uh, these people in this, we're living in this virtu virtual reality and they can make their own world. And as when this person comes out, he realized how, how, how same, how similar, how boring his creation was. Like he would have never imagined the diversity even in people that um, in the real in the real world. And he he recognized that. And so that's the thing. I think we can see that in ourselves. We could never dream of the magnificence. We can never, when we create things, we are, um, Tolkien talks about that, that we are sub-creators. We're, you know, we are just reflecting a little bit of God's creativity. Any creativity we have is just a reflection of God's great cre creativity. And so he's, he's just so magnificent and he's so diverse and he can create all these amazing, amazing things that we never, ever stop being in awe and wonder at them. So that's the first part of this, this passage. Um, then in the second passage, it talks about how good God is and his ways are perfect. And it's saying his instructions and his guidelines bring joy. They bring peace. That's how we can have fulfillment is when we can follow God's laws. Um, I have a, a another really short video on my YouTube channel. It's called The City on a Hill. And it quotes a passage of Augustine where he's talking about true happiness is found in God. When we're seeking God, when we seek God, then we we get the side we find God but the, the side benefit is happiness and that is only how we can have true happiness. So then the the last part of this is the the dilemma. This is what is keeping us from that true happiness and from this being in communion with this great God. And it says, How can I know? This is verse twelve, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. 
Keep your servant from deliberate sin. Don't let them control me. Then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. So David is calling on God to deliver him from himself, from his own sin. Okay. And he, David recognizes that he cannot even see his own faults. And we're all like that. And like, I just, you know, thinking about the most obvious current example of this is Harvey Weinstein. You know, he's all of these horrible things have come to light and been exposed after years and years. And to this day, he refuses to acknowledge any guilt. He thinks he's a victim. So, um, but David here is saying, I don't even know all the sins of my heart. You know, you have to, you know, have to cleanse me, Lord, and make me, cleanse me from these hidden faults. That only God can really deliver us from this. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So here, God is our redeemer, right? 